Mr. Chairman, thank you. Uh, I have two amendments. Mr. Chairman, are you okay if I go ahead and just follow, yes, give two of, both of them to you? Please. Uh, I'll just do a, a, a quick statement here. Uh, if, if all of us had a retail anything and I told you I was going to reimburse your shipping cost, go ahead and ship it, and then I'll pay you back for shipping later. And then two months later, after you shipped it, I actually reimbursed you half of the cost of shipping and said I've changed my mind. How would you respond to that? The exact same way independent pharmacies do to DIR fees. Right. That's the exact same thing. They're told one price. Then the rules change on them where PBMs reach in and say, no, we've changed the rules on how we're going to reimburse you. And they actually reimburse them less than they were paid at the counter for it. These DIR fees are killing our rural pharmacies. And this is a primary issue. While I'm very pleased to be able to see in this bill, there is some work that is done on DIR fees. The language is vague, and I don't think it's strong enough to actually be able to get at the root of the problem. And it still doesn't assure that independent pharmacies are actually reimbursed, actually what it costs them to buy the drug. And so there is something I think we do need to do to be able to make this stronger. The largest uh, independent pharmacy in my state lost $700,000 last year on DIR fees and has let us know this is not survivable. So my war is not with PBMs. My war is with PBMs because they're killing my independent pharmacies. And I want to do what we can to be able to stop that. So this DIR bill that I have with Senator Brown, we're working to be able to bring transparency and clarity into the process for actually how they're evaluated at independent pharmacies, clarity in the reimbursement process on that. And I would like very much the chairman and ranking members help in trying to be able to get this bill done in the days ahead. Senator, Senator Langford, I'll tell you, I think it's a particularly important effort that you're leading and as Dr. Schwegel knows, I have talked to him about this several times and have seen this problem in my state as well. So yeah. we are gonna stay at this through the summer months and be ready to go in the fall. Be great. Thank you Thank very you. much for that, for both of you on that. The second one I had deals with the uh, is the Ensuring Access to Lower Cost Medicines for Seniors Act. This is a bill that I have with Senator Menendez, Senator Cornyn, Senator Hassan, Senator Tillis, and Senator Bennett. All of us are working together to be able to solve this one key issue, and that is where drugs end up on the distribution list. Uh, what, is, what we know as tiering, but what most folks would know as the branded tier or the generic tier on this. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I also have, I'd ask unanimous consent, I have two letters of support for the record, one from the generics industry and one from a growing list of 21 patient advocacy groups that are very interested in this particular amendment. Without objection, it'll be so ordered. Thank you. Th this uh, amendment would ensure that Medicare Part D beneficiaries receive the full benefit of a lower cost generic and biosimilar medicines. Uh, right now, as we know very often, that generic drugs and biosimilars as they're coming out now are not placed on the lower cost generic tier for actual sale to the consumer. In fact, over half, that is 57% of the covered generic products were placed on non-generic sale tiers last year. 57% of those generics coming out are not actually being sold. What most folks would hear is they go to the pharmacy counter, they have a prescription, they ask their pharmacist, is there a generic for this? Their pharmacist responds, yes, there is, but it is the same price as the brand. Every time you hear that, that's this game that's happening right here where those generics are actually being placed on a higher cost tier. This is something that we need to be able to resolve, not only for the federal government and what we're paying, but what consumers are paying as well when lower cost generics are being placed on higher cost tiers to actually sell to the consumer. A recent Moran Company study estimated that beneficiaries could save between one and three billion dollars by making this change. This is one of those areas that we need to get scored and to be able to get it completed, but this would be a dramatic benefit for consumers and for the federal government in the days ahead uh, to be able to get this resolved. Yeah.